Hello again, VK3ZVX here. This is the completed uh, receiver section and audio um, for uh, the Type 78 RAF receiver. Um, this is based on a design which I've used before and which has been quite successful. Um, this is the uh, audio output transformer. The audio output tube, a 6V6G. Uh, this is the uh, audio amplifier tube, a 6SJ7. The detector tube, a regenerative detector, a 6SK7. And a 6AC7 grounded grid RF amplifier, or in this case, IF amplifier. Now, I always like to include a grounded grid amplifier in the front end of a regenerative receiver uh, because the grounded grid provides a shield which prevents the um, detector or oscillator detector circuit radiating forward um, either into the front end of the receiver in this case or into the antenna and uh, that can cause issues with radiation and also with detuning if the uh, antenna swings in the wind. If I lift up the chassis, uh, you can see the underside of the circuitry. Um, the coil is uh, about 123 turns of 0.25 millimetre wire wound onto a section of 20 millimetre plastic conduit. Now that's uh, about 0.8 of an inch and the uh, 0.25 millimeter wire. I'm not sure what the gauge is. Um, you'd have to look that up. Uh, we use metric here in Australia, and um, I can't remember the conversions off the top of my head. But the um, regenerative detector um, uses grid two of the 6SK7 uh, to control the regeneration. So there's a very fine control on that um, on that regenerative detector and uh, the design is in fact lifted from the Paraset uh, spy radio built by the British uh, during World War II. The rest of the circuit is uh, fairly straightforward for the 6SJ7 and the 6V6. And the uh, power supply will be built into the compartment at the bottom. So there will be a 100 VA trans primary transformer followed by a, um, now what's that one? Oh, so that's a 60 VA secondary transformer. Now, um, these days, uh, high voltage transformers um, for valve gear or vacuum tube gear are actually quite hard to come by. Um, even if you do find them, there's nothing to suggest that they're, they're going to be in operational condition, but basically they're hard to find. And so what I've taken to doing is to um, convert the mains power, in this case 240 volts AC, uh, down to a lower voltage, um, about 15 or 20 volts and then reconvert um, that voltage back up to something close to the mains voltage out of the what has now become the secondary of the uh, secondary transformer. So this was in fact the primary of the secondary transformer. It's now the secondary of the secondary transformer. I hope that makes sense. Uh, but along the way, there's a section between the two transformers which runs at either uh, 12, 15, uh, 24 or 30 volts. And it's possible to tap off this and uh, rectify it and produce 24 volts to drive the filaments and um, all the auxiliary uh, circuitry uh, associated with this, um, with this build. Now, of course, the high voltage, the 250 volts, is um, taken off these leads here and uh, rectified um, and put into a capacitor, about 100 microfarads at 450 volts or so. 
and that should produce around about 250 volts DC or about 268 volts DC I think was the last calculation but basically what you're doing is you're stepping down from 240 to 15 then feeding the I'm sorry 240 to 12 then feeding the 12 into the 15 volt winding here on this transformer and then coming out at something below 240 volts AC around about uh, 200 odd volts AC which converts to about 260 odd volts DC so that's how I'm achieving the um, high voltage supply uh, for this vacuum tube build um, okay now I've got a little speaker here um, this is uh, a computer speaker or a um, one of these sort of miniature um, uh, speaker units that you would plug into a computer it's four ohms rated at 10 watts it'll be mounted just here at the front of the uh, the chassis and uh, connected into the appropriate tap of the I'll just reverse this round so you can see it um, you see that this is a multi-tap transformer and uh, four ohms uh, corresponds to about uh, the 6.3 volt winding um, I always use uh, small multi-tap power supply transformers for uh, uh, speaker output transformers for uh, communications audio that's perfectly adequate it's not hi-fi the front panel here has been fabricated from a piece of scrap steel uh, that will mount into that location there so the speaker will go into the top part of that panel just next to the transformer and the controls will go into the bottom compartment so uh, regeneration control receiver incremental tuning and volume control as well as power on off and the um, uh, on off lamp or the power on lamp will also be in the bottom of that panel okay now speaking of scrap metal it is amazing what you can do um, in building this um, uh, cradle for the uh, type 78 I actually haven't done a lot of cutting I scrounged around the workshop for bits and pieces of metal I've done more folding than anything else um, and a metal folder is uh, one of the tools that I use uh, fairly regularly on builds and I'd just like to show you what can be achieved if you've got the basic tools and a bit of patience so we'll just pivot around the workshop here and we'll go over to the metal folder this is it here on the bench pardon the um, extraneous tools um, this is about a hundred dollars worth of tool it's got a um, clamping plate and a couple of uh, compact G clamps so that's the setup there and when you lift up the handles it folds the metal now it's not terribly fancy but it is an extremely effective tool and I get a lot of use and a lot of satisfaction out of it now just outside in the uh, spray painting area well, you don't spray paint inside the workshop um, there's this now this is the side cover to the power supply and audio compartment now this is made from a one millimeter sheet of aluminium uh, which I had kicking around the workshop for a while uh, it wasn't very straight and if you look really closely you can see the ripples in it that I didn't quite manage to get out but uh, it's taken a coat of primer and a uh, coat of epoxy or uh, black satin uh, epoxy enamel and um, as far as the paintwork and texture of the metal is concerned it's come up looking surprisingly similar um, to the state of the case on the uh, type 78 receiver so that's quite satisfying to get a, a job of that quality 
out of what's well, basically a piece of scrap metal and a couple of spray cans. Uh, that's pretty good going. So I'm quite happy with that. And um, all the holes have been pre-drilled and so on. Uh, all the folding has taken place on the metal bender that I showed you just a moment ago. And this has actually uh, come up pretty well. So all of those holes are in the perfect position to assemble the thing nice and square and straight. And um, once the paint's dry, I'll do a bit more video and uh, show you how it all goes together. Okay, so that's where I'm up to. Um, thank you for watching, and uh, there'll be some more soon. A VK3ZVX. Yeah.